Good morning, everyone. You're very welcome to St. Clair's for our parish celebration of Sunday Mass on this, the 23rd Sunday of our church's year. Whether you are here in person or watching in on webcam, we are so glad you have joined our parish family in prayer. Before we begin our Mass, please take a moment now to make sure your phone is off or at least on silent. Today is a very special day. We gather to celebrate Father John's 40 years of priestly ministry, 19 of which have been served so faithfully here in Grey Cullen and Collection. We extend a warm welcome, welcome to Father John's family, especially his mother Bridie, who I'm sure is so proud today. We are blessed to have our beloved Poor Clare sisters with us. They have a special relationship with Father John through their mutual prayers and support to each other's vocation. Father John, as you know, is not keen on being in the limelight. So we take a moment now to pray for him, that God will give him courage and peace of mind to settle his anxious heart and help him to relax into this morning's celebration. I invite you now to stand as we welcome our procession led by our celebrant for today, Bishop Dennis Nolte. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Kindly take your seats just for a moment. I want to firstly welcome the Sunday school teachers 
Jenna, Nicole and the youth helpers, Quiva, Anna, Eva and Annie, who will now make their way with the young people to begin their work. And they're going to work all about creation. We'll hear from them later on. So if you make your way now, let's give a big clap for all our Sunday school people as they make their way now. So boys and girls, now is your chance now to join them. So don't be afraid. Go straight up there. Now, well done. Give a big boo the boss for little boys and girls. Well done now. Excellent. Great. And I have to give the Bible to someone. Is that right? I thought for a moment there Father John was joining the Sunday school. Now, excellent. It's hard to keep him seated down today. Excellent. Oh, there's more coming. This is great. Good boy. What's your name? Mm -hmm. Enough of that, says you. Excellent. Good boy. Excellent. That's okay. Well done. Friends, as we gather, it's been a very rough week for those who suffered silently in our schools for far too long. The Scorpion Inquiry shines a light on a very dark past. Behind every sentence, Every paragraph, every page of that report released on Tuesday last is a young child who suffered hugely in the very place they deserved to feel safe. I commend the survivors of abuse who found their voice in the unfolding of this scoping inquiry. Here in St. Clair's Church, Great Cullen, this morning, I want to express my heartfelt sorrow for the trauma experienced by too many and promise as your bishop that I will do my utmost to ensure the work of safeguarding continues to be a priority in every facet of diocesan life. This morning Jesus invites us to find our voice by touching our lips with those same words he spoke to the deaf man, Ephatha, be opened, be loosened, be freed. The healing of one in St. Mark's Gospel who is both deaf and mute with a single word. The power of language, the power of articulation, the power of encounter. I pray those abused in our day and boarding schools run by religious orders and indeed in the wider church and society will have encountered some sense of healing in recent days. And I realise it's very much a journey. In today's Mass, we meet Christ the Healer, who has a strong resonance with every aspect of Greg Cullen Collection Parish. It's entirely appropriate that we gather this Sunday around Father John to honour and celebrate his ruby anniversary of ordination. I welcome very warmly his mother, Bridie, his sisters, Anne and Breda, his brother, Colm, Colm's wife, Trish, his godmother, Lila, his nephews, Robin and Owen, and Owen's wife and children. I welcome John's sister, Mary, who joins us from Italy through the parish webcam. I welcome the priests who gather alongside parishioners and friends, including those from Lourdes, Catherine, Angela and Ted. John Brake brings great energy, commitment and dedication to all he does. He's a priest to his fingertips. This parish is an example of how young people can be nurtured in their faith in the safest 
of environments, the church, the parish centre. Today would be the 69th anniversary, I understand, of John's parents' marriage. In welcoming Bridie, we fondly think of Liam and all we miss on days like this. And so we just take a moment to watch a short clip on the screen of well wishes from the poor Clares right beside us here and also from others who simply can't be with us this morning. Let's watch the screen. Good morning, Father John. I am Father Martin from Our Lady of Lowe's Sanctuary, the place you know so well. You are celebrating 40 years as a priest of the Most High. That is why I am wishing you happy 40th priestly anniversary. We are praying for you, and Our Lady loves you so much, and she is interceding for you. Happy anniversary, Father John. Thank you, and may God bless you. Hi, Father D. Um, congratulations on your anniversary. Um, I'm one of those uh, who are fortunate who get to know you. And I truly believe that um, Carlo is blessed to have an amazing pastor like you. So I will continue to pray for you, that God will grant you wisdom, strength, and of course, good health. Have a wonderful celebration. Good afternoon, John, and just to wish you congratulations, you and your family, and all of your uh, parishioners and everybody there with you enjoying uh, these, uh, these days. Just to thank you for your friendship over the years. Look forward to many more years. Enjoy the great celebration, and uh, uh, thank you for everything. Congrats, John. We, the poor Clare community, unite with the parish in greeting Father John and the 40th anniversary of our nation to the priesthood, our heartfelt gratitude to him for his goodness, kindness and availability to us since he came to St. Clare's parish 19 years ago on the feast of St. Clare. We wish him every blessing of continued good health, happiness and success in his ministry. Hi John and all my friends in Great Cullum. I'm sorry that I can't be with you today, but you know, Judy calls it Sunday. I'm sure you, you will have a very happy day, and I'm sure that all the choirs are there. We've got amazing support. When I think of 40 years, I think of all the times that you helped me. And what I bring to Eden Dairy here is what I've learned from you and from the people of Great Cullen. Have a very happy day, John, and enjoy it all. And thank you, and God bless. Hello, Father John. It's Archbishop Eamon here up in Armagh. I hear you're having big celebrations, and well-deserved, John, because 40 years of priesthood represents a tremendous commitment and dedication to your calling. I'm sure during these days you're thinking back to when you first decided to be a priest, when you wanted to serve God, and serve God's people. And John, I have no doubt that you have done just that in a prayerful, gentle, and hugely energetic way. I know that when I've visited the parish there in Great Cullen and around that area, people speak of you as a good priest, a man of prayer, a man of commitment to your people. So I wish you on this special occasion, as we say in the priesthood, ad multos annos, many more happy and fulfilling years of ministry. God bless you, John. And so, friends, joining our good wishes to those on the screen, we stand now for our penitential act. Sent to heal the contrite of heart, Kyrie Eleison. You came to call sinners. Christ. 
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray, and we pray the opening collect from the screen. Lord, pour your love into our hearts, so that we may show love to others, just as you show love to us. Always keep us safe in your tender care. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We we'll sit now and listen to God's word. And the poor clerks will lead us in our first reading, and Karen will sing the psalm, and Anne-Marie will take us through our second reading. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Say to all faint hearts, courage, do not be afraid. Look, your God is coming. Vengeance is coming. The retribution of God, he is coming to save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unsealed. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongues of the dung, dumb sing for joy. The water gushed in the desert, streams in the wasteland, the scorched earth becomes a lake, the parched land springs of water. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. James. Take the case, my brothers, of someone who has never done a single good act, but claims that he has faith. Will that faith save him? If one of the brothers or one of the sisters is in need of clothes and has not enough food to live on, and one of you says to them, I wish you well, keep yourself warm and eat plenty, without giving them these bare necessities of life, then what good is that? Faith is like that. If good works do not go with it, it is quite dead. This is the way to talk to people of that kind. You say you have faith and I have good deeds. I will prove to you that I have faith by showing you my good deeds. Now you prove to me that you have faith without any good deeds to show. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the Gospel acclamation. This morning from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus and his disciples left for the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he put this question to his disciples Who do people say I am? And they told him, John the Baptist, they said. Others, Elijah and other again, one of the prophets. But you, he asked, who do you say I am? Peter spoke up and said to him, you are the Christ. And he gave them strict orders not to tell anyone about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man was destined to suffer grievously, to be rejected by the elders and the chief priests, and the scribes, and to be put to death, and after three days to rise again. And all this he said quite openly. Then taking him aside, Peter started to remonstrate with him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said to him, Get behind me, Satan. Because the way you think is not God's way, but man's. He called the people and his disciples to him and said, If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, you must renounce yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. For anyone who wants to save your life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. And this is the good news, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ.
PJ, it's a joy to have you with us. The gospel you read was a lovely one. You're getting us ready for next Sunday. But let's go back to this Sunday, which is all about the touching and the, and, 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 and the wonderful moment of, of the, 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 the one being touched and healed by Jesus. So lovely to be here on this splendid day. Because the gospel of Mark, it brings us that powerful sense of the close involvement of Jesus with his people. Jesus didn't heal from a distance. He had no fear of infection. He was very content to lay his hands on the man, even to putting his fingers in the man's ears and touching his tongue with spittle. It was very much rolling up your sleeves ministry. I recall the beautiful baptismal moment two weeks ago when I prayed the Afata prayer over my goddaughter's little twins in the church of a lady of perpetual help, Jenkinstown. As the parents, Michelle and Nikki, with me, traced a sign of the cross over the ears and mouth of Toda and Orla. The very same happened in the old church in Port Leisha in the autumn of 1959 as Bridie and Liam Dunphy presented young John Dunphy for baptism. None of us know what will become of a child after baptism. Their faith journey is entrusted not just to parents and to family, but to the wider community. Last Sunday, John turned 65. Having been educated in the Patrician Brothers Abbey Leaks and the Salesians in Haywood, he entered St. Patrick's College, Maynooth, in 1977, ordained on Pentecost Sunday, 1984, in St. Bridget's Church, Ballinakill. Teaching in Knockbeg for eight years, before taking up a curacy in Monastery Evan for a further eight years, then to Newbridge for five years. John was appointed parish priest of Great Cullen Collection Parish here on the 6th of August, 2005, the Feast of St. Clare, where he has remained since. It's right and proper that we gather around John to celebrate this milestone, not just in years, but in what has been achieved in the outreach and mission that is Great Cullen Collection. He would be very quick to move the spotlight off himself and onto others. But John, as all of you know, leads by example. He does not ask someone to do something he wouldn't do himself. He walks the walk. He talks the talk. He engages fully with the schools, as St. Felix, Collection, the Saplings and Knockbeg will attest, but also the many young people in St. Leo's and the CBS and Tyndall in Presentation College and in Gael Kaloshta, who are part of the youth ministry that is at the heart of this parish. John is never afraid to ask the tough questions and think outside the box, as he does, for instance, with sacramental preparation, firmly moving it into a personal commitment with a parish focus, while the schools are still deeply involved. His small keepsake ordination card, now on your screen, has a verse from Psalm 85, Justice shall march before him, and peace follow his steps. From the very beginning of his priesthood, John Dunphy had always a keen eye out for justice and the rights of all. I know St. Francis of Assisi is his favourite saint. John's eye for justice and outreach I think crystallised in the building and operation of St. Clare's food kitchen across Greg Bridge. I recall the early days of St. Clare's hospitality. There was a delivery of food hampers around the town, probably around Christmas. John was, of course, in the heart of the action. I think Lee Lawton might have been seconded to driving a particular delivery van, which John fell out the back door of. Such was his sense, like Jesus, of always having a close involvement with people. 
It was not a serious fall, thank God. The back needed a little of attention, then he still complains a bit about that, but we ignore that. But as a Man United supporter recently, he's more recently accustomed to falling. <laughs> we won't even mention last Sunday his birthday and that match. I'm so glad Buddy is there as a distraction. John is always generous in his outreach, pastorally, liturgically, spiritually. I know the poor Clares, our great friends, keep John's mission, as they do keep all our mission, at the heart of their prayer. John gives of himself while also empowering women and men around him to take their full place in our church. He reflects deeply on ministry and outreach, and today we simply say thanks for this. While Francis may be his number one saint, Bernadette comes a close second. Such is his love for Lourdes. And indeed his attention to the vulnerable and the sick in St. Felix and the district hospital and many other places and house calls. In Mark's Gospel, Jesus models for us all a close involvement with people, a respectful one, a one that allowed the ears and the mouth of the deaf man with speech disabilities to be loosened. As I said at the beginning, I know in these past few days, all of us have once again been shocked by the revelations of abuse of the young and vulnerable in our schools. While schools today have robust safeguarding protocols, this assurance by no means lessens the pain and suffering of survivors and victims in the past. Our schools should always lead by word and by example on how to look after children in their care and particularly children with special needs. What we read in, and read in reports, what we hear in the media, sickens me. Sickens good priests. Sickens people for whom faith is so important and so precious. Sickens all of us to the core. As we honour today John Dunphy's Ruby Jubilee, we also remember survivors and their families. Families who have been the constant companion of the survivor on these difficult journeys. May all of us together move to a place where healing may begin. Knowing that the shepherd whom John models his priesthood on has us all in the palm of his hands. Today we give thanks to God for the gift of Father John and his priestly ministry, so faithfully lived for 40 years. On the day of his ordination, Father John was called to be a teacher, priest, and shepherd of those entrusted in his care. As teacher, he is called to constantly share and preach the living word of God, which he himself has received with joy. As priest, he is called to be a faithful steward of God's mysteries, so that through his ministry, Christ continues to renew people in the waters of baptism and nourish them from God's altar to forgive and reconcile sinners and raise up the sick and to bring the grace of God's love into the lives and needs of God's people. As shepherd, Father John is called to exercise a ministry of servant leadership, leading the people of this parish closer to God and to one another building up the parish into a vibrant witness to the presence of Christ in our world. And so, Father John, please receive once more this book of the scriptures from Paddy, your faithful servant, as a reader in our parish, representing your ministry. 
Father John, may you continue to welcome God's word into your life. Believe what you read, teach what you live, and practice what you teach. By your preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, may the words of the gospel bear fruit in human hearts. We pray, blessed be God God forever. forever. Father John, receive once more this pattern and chalice, a sign of your priestly ministry. From Liz and Jer, married couple, and both Eucharistic ministers. Father John, may you continue to share in the sacred ministry of Christ, strengthening God's holy people with the grace of the sacraments, and joining the prayer of the people with the prayer of Christ to God the Father. By your sacred ministry and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, may this community of faith grow in holiness and faith as the people of God. We pray. Blessed be God forever. Father John, receive once more the keys of our churches, Holy Cross and St. Clair's, a sign of your shepherding ministry from yours and our sacristans, Vera and Catherine. Father John, you've been entrusted with the care of this parish. May you continue to lead your people in holy charity. That great Colin collection will serve as an image of the living Christ and a constant witness of faith, hope and love. We pray. Blessed be God. Let us all stand now as Father John kneels. We extend our right hand over Father John as his uncle, Father Noel, now prays a blessing on all our behalf. May the grace of God, who founded the church and guides her still, protect you constantly, that you may continue to faithfully live your priesthood. May God grant you the wisdom, understanding, and strength you need always to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. May you be inspired with the vision of God's kingdom and be gifted with the words you need to spread the gospel. May you experience joy in your ministry And may you always know the healing hand of God in times of personal need. May you be an instrument of God's love. May he make you a servant and a witness in the world, your divine charity and a faithful minister of reconciliation. And may he make you a true shepherd to provide the living bread, the word of life, and your people that they may continue to grow in the unity of the body of Christ. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. John stands now with all of us as we profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who received from the Father and the Son. And the Son is the Lord and Lord of God, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one Holy Spirit.
just before we commence our prayer of the faithful, we'll take up our first collection. So I invite you to pass around, please, the blue bag. And the stewards will take that up now. So leading us in our prayers, we have Nicola, Principal of Collection, John, Principal of Knockbeg, Jennifer, Volunteer with St. Clair's, Hospitality, Francesca, Parishioner, Aoife, Youth Ministry Team Leader, Joan, the Nurse Manager of St. Felix, and Porrick, Deputy Principal of St. Felix National School. So now, Lord, as we gather in prayer on this day, honouring the Ruby anniversary, you are the one who keeps faith forever, who is just to the oppressed, who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners free. Hear now our prayer and open for all creation your fountain of life and blessing. Father John's respect and care for children knows no bounds. We pray for all children that they may have a happy, healthy childhood filled with love and compassion. May they always know Jesus as a friend. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all young people, especially those who minister in this parish. May they continue to be inspired by Father John's youthful energy, his example of Christian living, and his generosity of spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We think of all those who find themselves on the margins of both church and society. May they know the love of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, in the actions of his priest, religious, and all Christians. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray in thanksgiving for Father John and hold those who, like him, accept with open arms those from other countries and other faiths. May we always strive to be the welcoming face of Jesus to all we meet. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that, like Father John, we may follow the example of St. Francis in our appreciation of animals, of nature, and our care for all of God's creation. We think especially of Buddy, Father John's loyal companion, and wish them both many more years of health and happiness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all healthcare workers and chaplains who serve the sick and bring comfort to the dying. Lord, we thank you for the gifts you have given them and ask you to bless them in their special ministry. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that the parish family here in Great Cullen Collection may always appreciate Father John and help to sustain his ministry by our love, our constant prayer and our trust in his leadership. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We fondly remember those uh, who have died and whose anniversaries occur in or around this time. We remember uh, in our prayers uh, Paul McKevitt, Crossneen, Paddy and Maureen, uh, Shanahan Tipperary, Elizabeth Redmond, Oak Park Road, and Evelina Perez, Manila. Also praying for Patty Carthy, Offaly, Father Alexis Healy, Dublin, Marie Nolan, Mount Clare Court, and Barney Hennessy, 11 Willow Park, Tuller Road, formerly of Whitney Place. Remembering also those who, who, who were remembered in earlier Masses this morning here in Great Cullen, last evening in Great Cullen, and earlier today in Holy Cross. We also fondly pray for John's late dad, Liam. May all of them rest in peace. Lord, hear us. God of power and compassion, in Christ you reveal your will to heal and to save. Open our ears to your redeeming word and move our hearts by the strength of your love that we may witness to your life in Jesus our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We kindly now take up our second collection which is the red bag, if you pass it around please. As we have the off to possession of Lila, Father John's godmother brings up the gift as his sister Anne and godson Robin and his man Bridie, helped by Breda. So we'll now have the offertory procession as well as the second collection.
dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, our, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim in song. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one 
by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with Dennis, our Bishop, and with all people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. now to welcome our little ones back to us who have been at their Sunday school. They should be arriving any moment. We hope. Maybe they got homework. They're coming. That's a big clap for them. Well done. John, on this year's special day, there's just a few things we wanted to say. We want you to know we see all that you do, and here's a few things that are special to you. The food kitchen our school, the bingo the pool, the parish centre the halls, and a million house calls. It seems to us you are always on the go, and all of this done with buddy in tow. We are so <laughs> grateful for all that you do, our parish wouldn't be the same without you. <laughs> So as they make their way back to their mums and dads and grands and granddads, let's stand now and turn to the Lord in prayer. And as we lead the pattern of all our prayers, we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church and graciously grant her peace in unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's give each other a great wave of peace now. God bless you all.
as we pray together. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us. him who is close to all of us who touches our ears and our mouth behold him who takes away the sins of the world blessed are those called to the supper of the lamb lord i'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed the blood of christ bring each of us to everlasting life amen
As we travel through this world, our lives are touched by one who makes a profound impact upon us. Someone whose kindness and sense of humanity serves to make our days just that bit brighter. Someone who reminds us of Jesus in his goodness and in his capacity to reach out to others. A gentleman who takes the time to extend his hand and open his heart to all those in need. Someone who, like the shepherd, tends to his flock, young and old, with love and devotion. And the flock, in turn, willingly follows the good shepherd's lead, knowing in their hearts that he was sent to guide them in his love, in his wisdom, to the greenest of all pastures. Such a man are you, Father John, and we are all grateful and blessed by your presence in our lives. Let us pray. We'll stand now for our prayer after communion. And again, we'll read it together from the screen. Grant that all your people, O Lord, will feel nourished with life through the food of your word, your body and your blood. May we always gather to benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you just to take your seats for a few moments, please. Earlier, before we have the cake, just for a moment, earlier in the procession... Father Peter, would you bring over the, the, the lovely jug and, and say for, for you, thank you. Earlier in the procession, carried up in the offertory procession by John's mother, Bridie, was a beautiful piece, Father John, which has come from Lourdes, from the parish for you, and it's also the Lourdes waters in it, so we just meant to mention that at the offertory. So that's a special, you know, they were told me that they, they particularly loved that at Lourdes. <laughs> Orla, where are you? Coming. Is that right, Katrina? Yeah, excellent. Excellent. So, John, maybe you might come to the centre here again. Great. This is not, I promise you, a Man United cake, so don't get too excited. <laughs> And we thought it would be appropriate that Father John might cut the cake here. We won't eat it here. It'll be yet later on. But many of you might have been disappearing for other reasons. But this is a beautiful cake. Let's give a big clap to all involved in the making of the cake. The cake, John, was made by Earl McHugh in Carlo College, St. Patrick's. And Jackie from Literature Group presents that with a... And the photo of John is going to take a picture now of you with the cake. So... It might be lovely if your man came over here. Exactly. Greet it. Great. So, John, maybe you might like to say a word. You have announcements to make for the coming week or whatever. <laughs> the newsletter is available, so all the different announcements are on it. So I, I forget what they are at this stage. Um, I was really told um, that this was going to be just an ordinary Sunday Mass. 
if it was an ordinary Sunday Mass, you would be out of here by 10 past 12. So I, that's not that. So I do apologize. Um, I just want to thank you all. Um, I'm being very humble because I really feel I'm just one part of a huge team of people who work so, so hard behind the scenes. And I'm just one. Sometimes you'll feel you're just on the name on the door, but all the work is done by other people. But I want to acknowledge and thank them. Thank you, Bishop Dennis, for being here and for your support. And in thanking Bishop Dennis, I want to thank all the bishops throughout my 40 years. Um, Bishop Jim Moriarty, Bishop um, Larry Ryan, and the Bishop who ordained me, Paddy Lennon, all those years ago. And Monsignor Brennan, a very deep friend who was administrator and was a huge, a huge support as well. Thank you. It's just lovely to have my uncle Noel here today because whether he knows it or not, but I used to, as a young fellow, stay with him and watch him in ministry, and he was the one that inspired me to become a priest all those years ago. So, thanks. <laughs> I just want to thank um, Father PJ, a real dear and close friend of mine, for being here today, and also to Father Tom and Monsignor Brendan. Thank you again. It's lovely to have you here. Thank you. Just looking back in 40 years, I suppose, um, I was blessed with wonderful appointments. My time in Nutbeg for eight years gave me a huge love of young people, and the young people today inspire me to keep going in my ministry. I just think they're fabulous. See even the children and the young people looking after them there. That's so, so um, special for me as a priest to keep going. And I suppose throughout the 40 years, and I know Bishop Dennis referenced it a good bit today, and I just want to reference this again as well, because throughout those 40 years, you did experience a lot of pain for people who were hurt and abused by the church. And also maybe feeling a sense of shame that you're part of a church that allowed that to happen. And maybe angry at times too and whatever. And seeing our church being persecuted as well. But thankful to the support of all of the many people who work in the various ministries, we continue to make the church what it should be based on the gospel values of Jesus and the person of Jesus himself. I just want to mention one person because in later years, I got great support and strength from um, every morning a good friend of mine, Jackie, who we share scripture, reflections and passages together and pray together. And that has been a huge important part of my ministry to um, make sure that Jesus, his gospel, is the center of all that we do. I was blessed to work in all the different parishes with, and schools with so many, many religious. And while there is a dark chapter, we must never forget there's lots of really good chapters in their story as well. And I've experienced so much goodness and so much um, dedication and service for so many of the religious that I work with down through the years. And 